You're now watching the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Well, here's some good news for you, Bears fans, who are disgusted by the offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron. Luke Getze's available. The Raiders fired him last night. Hi, and welcome into a post-game edition of the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Podcast Network. And if there's one thing I've prided myself on over the years, it's to not break promises. And I broke one yesterday. I apologize. I wanted to get this podcast out shortly after the game, but I was... I was under the weather all weekend, headachy, hot, cold, not COVID, but not feeling well. So we're doing it today, a little bit tardy. I apologize. It did give me the benefit of putting together some more lucid thoughts that are, aren't that aren't as emotionally driven as they would have been yesterday because you probably have had your fill of that already. And certainly by the end of Monday or Tuesdays, radio programming for those of you who enjoy terrestrial radio you will be so ready to move toward the next week's game and that's something that i'm looking forward to doing the patriots are a team that's getting a little bit better we're hoping to have adam vinatieri on the show for you this week but let me get to the bears and their 29 to 9 loss against the cardinals yesterday and i want to i want to go through this more intellectually than emotionally, if I can, because I am not, as you probably are aware, the world's biggest Bears fan, but I do want to see them succeed, and I believe they should succeed. I forecast them to do so, and anybody who ever flaps his gums over sports or pecks away at a laptop wants to be right, no matter what they say. Uh, we all want to be right, and I picked the Bears to win 11 games this year. They're 4-4 four and four after the loss in the desert yesterday. They're not going to get to 11. They probably won't get to 10. It's not going to get easier in a couple weeks once they start divisional games. They have a thresher through which they have to travel. It includes Green Bay, Detroit, and Green Bay is still a very good football team. Don't kid yourself. And then San Francisco, the Vikings, you're loaded up with those games you have to win late in the season, and that's that's a problem. I, uh, I thought Matt Eberflus did a terrible job this past week not flushing the toilet on the turd dropping in the nation's capital against Washington last week, and players talked about that. Again, after the game yesterday for the sexy, here I am getting upset, after the game for the second straight week, players talked about what they didn't do during the week that bothered them. And it's it's got something that's got to stop after today or certainly no later than tomorrow. They have to turn the page. Caleb Williams noted that yesterday after his lousy performance he didn't have much of a chance again but again his throws are tardy and a nice first drive of the game he gets rid of the ball a little bit earlier on a Keenan uh, Keenan Allen slant probably goes for a much bigger play it wound up getting broken up so it didn't go for any play whatsoever but uh, the Bears defense was very flawed yesterday and I guess we should have expected this and it's one of the reasons I played the I, I said I'm not playing the Bears this week. I'm not laying any points on the Bears until Bears until they can go on the road and prove they can win a game against a team that is playing good football right now. I've not seen a ton of Kyler Murray this year, but I was impressed yesterday with his resilience. I, I thought he demonstrated a lot of poise yesterday. And uh he in year number six finally is materializing as the quarterback the Cardinals thought he would be while the Bears continue to swing and miss in the first quarter they are the worst first quarter offense in the NFL and it was a nice first drive but a sack puts the Bears out of field goal range so they get nothing to show for it on their first drive of the game which again was it started nice even though they had nothing to show for it they moved the chains a few times they had a few good gains on first down because first down is killing this team when you're consistently in second and nine, second and 12, you're you're really making life difficult on yourself way more than you need to make it. And they had injuries on the offensive line again. Larry Borum stepped in at left tackle. He's been moved around quite a bit. He's also had injury issues. I like Larry Borum. 
So I'm not going to hit him too hard, but I will hit the Bears O-line coach and all of their coaches for not being better teachers when it comes to lining up on the line of scrimmage. How many times have we seen Bears tackles, most specifically a real good player and second-year man Darnell Wright, the 10th player chosen last year in the draft, uh, and, and yesterday with Borum, not being on the line of scrimmage. you you got to step up. I understand why you want that easy, easy release to open up if a guy is trying to get to your outside shoulder and get around you that way. You've got to, you can't get beat around the edge. And I understand that tackles are very mindful of that, but you got to trust your feet and you got to trust your punch. And they are opening up and backing off of the guard to, in the case of Borum yesterday, to his right. In the case of Darnell Wright, when he's guilty of it, to his left. And you've got to stop this. These pre-snap penalties are crushing the Bears. This is an offense that was supposed to be dynamic. And other than wins against Carolina and Jacksonville, it hasn't been. And we all should have seen this coming. You put up five touchdowns in back-to-back games for the first time in decades, but very few of us stopped to recognize that, hey, it was against Aladdin. I'm sorry, it was against the genie, NFL genie, David Tepper, the Panthers, when they came to Chicago. And then you had the win against Jacksonville, another five-touchdown game. Uh, geez, uh, you know, we okay, here we go. We got everything figured out. And now back-to-back losses to the Commanders and the Cardinals have Bears fans reeling and wondering what the F is going on with this football team. <sighs> Stop talking, Bears. Just don't talk about it. Be dicks to the media. Get an edge. Move past it. In those rooms, and Dave Wanstead did a nice job talking about this on the Bears post on Marquee last night. Don't let the questions you're being asked get in the way of why you're going to work every day. Don't talk to the media. I have no problem if the Bears take a pass on answering questions this week, and I rarely feel that way. I think the leaders need to step up and make their usual weekly commitments. I expect Caleb Williams to talk Wednesday. Eberflus will do it every day, but I I wish Matt would finally toughen up and just look in a room of people and say, look, we did this last week and it didn't do us any good. We're not going to talk about the Cardinals game for a minute. If you want to talk about the Cardinals game, do it with yourselves. I'm here to talk about the Patriots and where our football team is going as we approach the middle of the season here at 4-4. and It uh, it was an ugly day for the Bears' defense, but again, expected because of the absences, the continued absences of Jaquan Brisker, still concussed and hasn't been able to clear protocol for that, as well as Kyler Gordon, their outstanding nickel corner who's been battling a hamstring injury. He didn't suit up again yesterday. Montez Sweat took the day off because he had a shin contusion. Let's talk about that. There was an era in which the a player's most important ability was his availability. Shout out to Pete Bursich, my guy in the Twin Cities. You, uh, <laughs> I don't know why Montez Sweat didn't suit up yesterday, and it bothers me because he hasn't been productive, and he has popped off a few times about things that he has no right to. He said he was disrespected, and I think it was week three. Was it the Colts game when he was blocked one-on-one by a tight end? Maybe it was the next week. I don't know. But he's blocked in single single uh, pass protect by a tight end, and he said he felt disrespected. Going back to Washington, he, he commented similarly on his being traded to the Bears. I felt disrespected. You want to earn the respect of opposing offensive coordinators when they game plan for you? Start start knocking quarterbacks on their asses. Now, he had a slow start to the year, didn't have a sack against the Titans, didn't have one against the uh, Texans in week two, the Sunday night loss, 19-13. to But he, uh, he picked it up a little bit late. But a shin contusion, 
And Eberflus gave him the pass on it yesterday in his post-game news presser. Yeah, you can't really trust that ankle if you can't open it up and blah, blah, blah. And he wasn't exactly sure about the details of the cleat sweat took in the shin against the commanders. But if there is no structural damage, if there is no damage to the bone, wherever the bone is, or to the ligaments, cartilage, tendons that encase those bones, find a topical analgesic, an ice pack, and go suit up. That's a 21st century injury miss personified. I didn't check out any of Hampton and Obradovich last night on GN, and I don't know if they worked because it was a later game, but I'm sure Hampton had some thoughts on sweat missing. Jesus. A shin bruise? Man. And Andrew Billings hurt his chest yesterday. I have no idea if it happened during the game or if he maybe got a fork or a jar of mayonnaise or something he jammed up against the side of the table when he was digging into his latest big meal, but uh, he wasn't very effective. I thought the way the Bears handled um, Tyreek Stevenson was acceptable. He didn't play the first two series of the game. It was good to see Terrell Smith, the second-year man out of Minnesota, have a nice game. He had a really good breakup in the first quarter yesterday, good extension, good closing speed that forced the fourth down in a Arizona punt. That was good stuff. And by the way, every time I see Arizona punt, I miss Gary player or Scott player. Gary player was a golfer. You remember Scott player? I believe he's the NFL's last single bar face mask guy. And his face used to be smushed in. He was a chubby punter. He was the Cardinals punter when the bears beat him in zero six on that dramatic Monday night game in week six. Uh, The 24-23 win, crown their ass game. (laughs) I loved Scott Player. But uh, that's a lousy game. You don't defend the run. You don't run the ball very well. Swift has been better than I thought. They didn't get him going yesterday. Roma Dunze, the only really Bears highlight with another 100-plus yard receiving game. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, eh, meh. Mixed bags. But when your quarterback is running for his life all day and getting banged around and you're not getting decent gains on first down and you're always in third and long, you're SOL. It's just not uh, it's not good. So as as I look for the Bears this week to shut their mouths and not talk any more about the Arizona game, once you get past today's news conferences, maybe tomorrow for the head coach. Players always have Tuesdays off. They don't talk on Tuesdays unless they have radio or podcast commitments. (laughs) Good stuff from Olin Krutz last week on the score about players podcasting. Yeah. Are you doing everything you can? Maybe a little more time in the weight room and a little less time with your podcast. He was talking about Cole Komet when he said that. I don't know if he meant Komet specifically, but, uh, that's that's what started the conversation, and I don't even know if Komet does a podcast. He's very media-friendly. We should get him on, see if he'll spend some more time outside of the weight room and talking about football with us. <laughs> Didn't have a catch yesterday. The Bears have a pretty good kicker in Cairo Santos. That's a real highlight. Four and four, man. This just feels wrong. It, it, you know, and I, I didn't expect them – to be a Super Bowl contender, but I thought they would beat the teams they should beat. I didn't think they would lose games as a favorite like they did yesterday, like they did, you know, against the Commanders, which had a quarterback who probably wasn't going to play. We didn't learn until the morning of the game. Jaden Daniels was good to go for the Commanders, and he was good again yesterday. 29-9 to in Arizona. The NFL's longest rivalry. A lot of people didn't know that. Yeah, the uh, Chicago Cardinals, after the Cardinals moved from Racine, Wisconsin initially, Bears and Cardinals started hitting heads 85 years ago. Or uh, I'm sorry, not 80. Yeah, it was 105 years ago. 1920, I think, was the first time they played, or 25. One of the Flying Eagles told me that yesterday. But it... uh, 
It's crisis time. And in times of crisis, character needs to be demonstrated, not discovered. And I want to see Eberflus and his assistants show some of that. I want to see the players toughen up. And if it means being dicks to the media, do it. It, it didn't hurt the 06 Bears when people were upset about whatever events were not going their way amidst a 13 and three season to just put up the Heisman mechanic and say, look, I'm not talking about that, you know, and I want to talk about it. That That's for us to, to figure out, keep it in house. It's unfortunate. Ryan Poles was so still madly in love with Eberflus this past off season. You had Hall of Fame bound coaches. Now, I wouldn't have hired Bill Belichick, but he was available. Would the Bears have been better off with Hoodie this year than Eberflus? Would the Bears have been better off with a lot of guys than Matt Eberflus? My answer is yes. He's not head coach Timber. He's not a bright man. He's not a, a, a very good leader. He doesn't inspire confidence. He makes bad decisions. He, he burns timeouts. He wastes challenges. And I, who knows what his next gaffe is going to be that's going to cost him a game. I don't put yesterday's game on him as much as I do the players. But again, it's, it's, another, it's another week where the Bears have let one bad performance pave the way to a consecutive bad performance. And that has to stop. Another good point once that made on the postgame show yesterday on marquee and Dave is due for a visit with us. So is Tom Thayer. I don't think we've talked to double T here on the podcast since April, right around the draft. So I'm going to try to get him on this week to talk about crisis management. Brian Erlacher, if you missed the interview with him late last week, check it out on YouTube. Really engaging stuff about 23 minutes with Erlacher. And he he talked about some things that just need to change. And he doesn't watch a ton, but he understands the dynamics of a locker room. And he was terrific. I lost my train of thought on the Erlacher point I wanted to make, but I'm not going to stop and re-rack because I feel so good about these first 16, 17 minutes. I mean, this is this is award-winning stuff. But um I I just want them to get back to dialing in on on football and that's that's what Erlacher noted with Lovey Smith what Lovey demonstrated during type times of crisis was stability Eberflus has not done that I don't suspect he will Jim Harbaugh was available God almighty man they let this one get away I don't think they're a Super Bowl team with anybody coaching them this year, but they ain't four and four if they go in another direction from Eberflus. The Flus, the Flus needs to be on a noose. He's not a bad guy. He seems like a fine, goofy uncle type of dude, but uh, he's not head coach material. They should have recognized that after last season, but they were too drunk on wins over Joshua Dobbs. Taylor Heineke, Bryce Young. Congrats to Bryce Young, by the way, for muscling out a win over the Saints yesterday. Bryce Young is not finished yet, by the way. And this is what, you know, if I were a real vindictive SOB, I would be really pounding today. Maybe after the season will give us better cause for it because we'll have a complete 17 game, 16s in the, in the case of Montez Sweat, body of work to evaluate this season, but uh, we should have seen this coming a little bit more than we did. It's, uh, <laughs> this is life in Bearsville, isn't it? This is, when you're a fan of Team McCaskey, you're, you're so conditioned to this nonsense and it just doesn't seem to go away. And it probably won't until they change coaches. That won't be during the season. Although Luke Getze is available if you need a new offensive coordinator, if Shaden Waldron takes his playbook and goes home today. I want to thank you for listening to this odd, tardy edition of the Danny Mac podcast. It reminds you to do same game parlays at Bet Rivers. Pick two if you want. Pick five if you want. 
if you hit on a same game parlay, you can earn squares. And with those squares, you get bonus bets, profit boosts, and a chance to win up to $10,000 jackpots. Do the same game parlay every week on college and pro football at Bet Rivers. Last thing I want to say is this, and it's not about the Bears or the NFL. I have been trying to fall back in love with college football for several years, and I am unable to get back on board. I, You know, when, when we go through life, our interests in, in hobbies, in entertainment, in people, in food, all of those things, those things change. And I would think it's not an exaggeration to suggest in the 90s, I favored the college game to the NFL. As much as I love the NFL and love being around the Bears for 20 years regularly, um, 88 until 08-ish, uh, it just... That's actually 30 years. My math is good. I, I I can't fall back in love with it. I'm trying. You know what hasn't helped? Constant conference realignment. Geez, UCLA. Why is UCLA in the Big Ten Network? Someone asked me. Well, they're in the Big Ten now. <laughs> Welcome to UCLA. Welcome to Oregon, wearing their liquid metal helmets as described by Ryan Leaf on the radio broadcast of that game in Ann Arbor, Oregon, just taking it to the blue on Sunday. I find myself watching even the biggest games like I watch NBA games. And I'm not saying my sport's better than yours. I'm not trying to rip on the NBA, but I have a problem with the NBA in this. I find myself staring at the television after five minutes and not digesting a thing. I might as well have soundscapes or test pattern up on the monitor. Because I'm not really listening, I'm not digesting, I'm not focusing. I'm, you know, it's you had the number three and number six teams in the country in Happy Valley Saturday. It's Penn State, it's Ohio State. It's a sunny day, and I, I ten minutes in, I'm just staring at it vacantly. Conference realignment. The transfer portal, great for the players, terrible for the coaches, terrible for the fans. Who is where always has been a struggle because in college sports, players are, we usually get about two years with a great player, sometimes less, occasionally more. But I would say two years is about what we get with a great player, typically in college football. And with the transfer portal and guys changing uniforms like, you know, we change our socks, it just makes it hard for the fans. And the NIL money, God bless the players who were treated terribly for a number of years. Don't tell me about a free education. There's nothing free about it. They earn those educations. It's just too much too soon. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping Indiana football can bring me back. The Hoosiers are 9-0 and for the first time in school history. And I couldn't watch their game. I could have, but I chose not to the other day because I already have a car payment, basically, for the bills I have for, for video streams and direct TV. I didn't feel like adding Peacock. I didn't really feel the need to add a sixth streaming device to watch the Brass Spittoon game. IU giving uh, giving Michigan State a 10-point lead and then scoring 47 unanswered. Way to go. The Hoosiers, who uh, were last relevant in my life in the late 80s when Anthony Thompson out of Terre Haute was setting an NCAA record at the time for career touchdowns. He was a great college player. Played seven years in the NFL, but never really dominant. But Indiana football has never mattered. They've got Michigan and Ohio State coming up before the bucket game. Um, but uh, if they win one of the two, they wind up winning 10, 11 games and then go to the Big Ten title game, potentially. They've not been to it. I think this is the 14th year of the Big Ten championship game. That would almost get me in my SUV and head me down I-65 for my first Big Ten title game. But I'll be in South Bend that weekend for uh, my wife's reunion with Notre Dame alums. Uh, her college roommate is singing the national anthem at the Notre Dame men's basketball game that night. So I'll be missing the Big Ten title game to be a good teammate and a good husband. I'll be watching on my phone. 
Thanks for listening. Sam Michael is my executive producer. Adam Delavitt runs the show at Bet Rivers. Randy Merkin takes care of all of our guest bookings. And we're assisted with social media research and development by Troy Mocker and Alex Pastor. I'll be back with much more on the Bears and the Patriots and crisis management in the upcoming days on the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Podcast Network.